My name is Matt, and today we're going to look at something that isn't Infinity, or Infinity related. We're going to have a look at some stuff for Test of Honor. Test of Honor is a sam samurai miniatures game. Um, I bought these second hand, so we're just going to have a look at these. These are the main books, so this is the rule book with all the main rules that you need. This is the battle guide, which has some introductionary battles for you to go through and learn how to play and then there's a spring campaign so hey warrior monks of mount Hihei. Hihei. yeah my japanese is going to be probably put the test here so first let's have a look at the game so this i believe comes with a box so inside the box you should get uh, five samurai, twenty ashigari, ashigaru soldiers armed with spears, and ten ashigaru armed with bows or muskets. There are also parts to construct some of the ashigaru as command models. So let's have a quick look at the sprues for this. So this is the melee sprue involving the ashigaru. Ash, the Ashiguru soldiers on the spears, and this is the one armed with bows and muskets. So let's have a look at these under a closer camera. The focus. So the back banners, legs, uh, I believe this is the chests. So more arms, more chests, more legs, a uh, backpack of some kind, I believe, or possibly a drum. A banner pole for command, some katanas, some yari spears, uh, your sergeant's sword, and then the heads. And then into some sort of focus up close. Maybe it's a little like that. Let's edit. This bit out and then three, two, one. Okay. Maybe we can get this in a little bit more better light. So these are their heads. So that's the melee sprue. And the ranged sprue is very slow. You um, need to get the arms and things necessary for holding the weapons. You get the back banners, the quivers for the bows, legs, chests, backpack. Um, I believe these are the front parts. So maybe these go together to form a chest. Yeah, so back and front, back and front. And then we have another quiver. And then we have bows, the heads. Muskets, um, some more stuff, some arrows, and some katanas. So that's the spruce. Oops. Let's pop those on the side. For a moment. We also get bases. Now, these plastics are produced by uh, Wall of Nantes, and the bases are pretty standard affair all over bases and inside you also get um, some flat terrain pieces so you get this which is double sided destroyed and non destroyed and kind of shrine them Again, destroyed, uh, um, destroyed and non destroyed. Another large book, destroyed and no. And then you get some like difficult terrain pieces, walls, and I assume headers. If you look at these on the camera, you get quite a bit of this. So, looking at it, you get enough to build quite some substantial terrain pieces.
and inside you get the tokens. So let's just quickly find what all the tokens mean. If it finds you. Uh -huh. So we have lift drops. As I said, I picked up this set second hand, so everything's already punched out of its tray. I thought we'd just have a look at it and see. So these are all the blood drop tokens. These represent light wounds, minor cuts, and injuries. The two drop sides denotes two blood. Two blood drop sides denote two blood drops. Obviously, try not to get too many. So there's a single and double. Up next we have treasure tokens or objective markers. In particular scenarios, these represent something your warriors need to find or capture. They have number values on the back. So one, two, three, four, five. Then we have fate markers. Fate tokens go in the container with the action tokens. The third token ends the game. Oh, so there should be three. Oh, okay. So I assume you keep drawing tokens to determine what order they go in. But we'll look at that's that we're looking. We're gonna look at this next. So, action tokens. There are, there are two types of action tokens. Uh, there are... These are for Samurai, and these are for Commons. So you have a whole bunch of these tokens. During the game, the action tokens are put into a container, such as a bag or cap, and drawn out by drawn out one by one to determine whether a samurai or common commoner acts next. So it's kind of like if you play bolt action, where you have dice for units. So let's go over here, and then the last ones are reloading and cautious markers. These are cautious, and then the other side is the reload. Used after a musket is fired, or to show that the warrior is creeping along, so trying to hide. So they go over there. And then we have uh, a whole deck of cards. Um, so we have injury cards. Pretty much these have come right. What? Okay, next let's look at the dice. So, Test of Honor comes with its own special dice. This includes a side for a miss, a cross, which counts as a miss, and then a single sword and a Two swords. Okay. Next up, let's come and look at these cards. So the actual recruitment cards, so the unit cards. So there are three different types. There are samurai heroes, samurais, and commoners. This is a s individual commoner, and this is a group of commoners. This is identified because it has this little marker here. Let's see. This little marker indicates that it's a group of miniatures which go on a particular kind of base, which is somewhere else. 
but let's look at the individual ones. In the top corner is your recruitment cost. This is how many points it takes to recruit the model. This is obviously just an image to represent it. This first icon is under the abilities, so these are all classified as abilities. Um, this first one, this white one, is the number of dice you roll when trying to make a strike at an enemy. S stands for agility. This kind of, it looks like an S, but it's more like a squiggly arrow. Um, is agility. The number of dice rolled when trying to avoid an enemy attack or other tests of agility. This red one is strength. The number of dice rolled when determining the damage caused to an enemy or other tests of strength. The black one is wise. The number of dice rolled when quick thinking is required, such as targeting an enemy that is not the closest threat. Uh, this next symbol is honor. The number of dice rolled to keep your nerve and not fall back if your friends are cut down. And this last one, this Japanese kind of fan symbol, is actions. The number of times the warrior can act during a single turn of a game and therefore the number of action tokens you'll need. Okay. And the back of the card is just like this. So this is the samurai hero. This is probably going to be the leader. Uh, this is a devote samurai. And then this is just a regular common experiment. Okay. Up next, there are some injury cards. And these simply specify when you've taken a wound, where that wound is. So for example, an arm injury, you suffer minus one aim. A leg injury, is minus one agility, and this is ongoing for the battles. Up next are dishonor cards. And these can be obtained from committing shameful acts. So, for example, the next time any warrior in your force makes a test of honor, he loses one die. And I think these are all pretty much the same. They're once per battle. Yeah, so these are all lose one die. Then you have what are called, these are skill cards. Now some, this is unbeaten, there is a quest actually, it's win three battles in a row. Or master forged weapons, I think this is more maybe equipment, or something you can receive, plus one damage roll. Vault agility ongoing, so this gives you plus one. There are quite a variety of these. Evasions, barge past, knock down, tough hide, perfect aim, military scholar, so different things that help give you boosts. The rest of this book then details the rules how you do ability tests, the game turn summary, 
So at game turn, one player draws action tokens without looking. The player assigns it to one of his warriors, a samurai or a commoner, depending on his token. If a warrior completes his action, the token is placed on the warrior's recruitment card. So, recruitment cards are again this card. So once you're done, you take your commoner card and put it on there. Now they have only one action, so they can only do it once. If you have a player completes steps one, step one, and the players continue alternating, when the third fate is token, the turn is over. Return all tokens to the back. Ready the next turn. Whoever drew the third fate token gets to draw first. And then there are ability tests, information about the various actions you can do, such as charging, making an attack, things like loss of nerve, how groups of warriors work. warriors in the way and things, and information about the battle terrain. Some information about the different weapons. So this is about throwing weapons, and this is about um, weapon bonuses and fumbles. So what happens if you mess up your roll? And then just a summary of when you pass with more of a fight. So that's the main rules. It's only 16, 15 pages long. So it's pretty light and simple to get through. The battle guide, we'll go through and show you. You'll play through various different um, missions on how to do so. It will tell you um, assembly of miniatures you need. One samurai, three uh, Ashiguri armed with spears, and two armed with bows. Prepare the action tokens. Then the crew. And it will tell you all about how to go through the game. There are five in total. Recruitment limits go pretty high, oh, six, and then on about how to do further battles. And then just some examples of how to paint your miniatures. Because something that I think should be addicted to is something that came with it. I'm not sure, don't think these are usable in the game, but some cute little samurai dogs. Let me see if I can bring that up. Um, the little close cam for a minute. Can we bring it? My wife thinks this is adorable. That's one. And then this is another. It's very cute. Good old Shiba box in summer armor. So, um. Please like and subscribe and drop a comment below if there's anything you would like to see. If you're interested in Test of Honor and you play it here in Japan, please let me know. I'd love to meet up and try and start to play some games. Um, thanks for watching and see ya!